Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Acts, chapter number one. Acts chapter number one. Today is Pentecost Sunday, and we're going to start at Acts chapter number one, and we're going to read a couple of verses in chapter one, and then we're going to go to chapter number two. He says in Acts chapter one, verse number 12, then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. Get some music over there, Brother Will. Uh, and when they were come in, they went up into an upper room. Somebody say an upper room. Where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip, Thomas, and Bartholomew, and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon Zelotes, and Judas the brother of James. These all continued with prayer and supplication with the women uh, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. And in those days, in those days, stood up in the, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, and the number of names together were about an hundred and twenty. Everybody say a hundred and twenty. Drop over to chapter 2, verse number 1. Chapter 2, verse number 1. Since this is Pentecost Sunday, we're going to read verses 1 through, uh, through 12. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly, somebody say suddenly, suddenly there came a sound from the heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled. Everybody say they were all filled. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling it at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galilean? And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born, Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers of Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia, in Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia in Egypt and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Greeks and Arabians. We do hear them speak in our tongue the wondrous works of God. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Look over at verse number 39. For the promise is unto you. And to your children, and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. I'm going to get my thought from verse number four. 
where the Bible says, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. I'm going to use for a subject in your hearing this morning an encore performance of Pentecost. An encore performance of Pentecost. Everybody just say, do it again, Lord. Come on, say it again. Do it again, Lord. I got to put this hat on my head. It is just right in the sun here today. If the Christian church had a literal birthday, it would be the day of Pentecost, which officially occurs about 50 days after Passover or 50 days after Passover. If the birthday of the Christian church was to become an international holiday, it would be Pentecost Sunday, which is today. Pentecost Sunday is a special day that ends what we call Easter season. As a matter of fact, everybody just honk your horn and say, Happy Birthday, Church. You can write this down. The Judeo-Christian community acknowledges Pentecost Sunday for two reasons. Number one, it is an official feast celebrated 50 days after Passover, and it used to be marked by harvest. But secondly, it is the unofficial birthday of the Christian church, which was the first time God poured out his spirit with the miraculous sign of enabling people to speak in tongues. However, Pentecost has been given a renewed appreciation in modern Christendom. Starting in the late 1800s, the Lord began a fresh outpouring of his promised spirit.
we just read about in Acts chapter number 2 continue to this day. Yes, they continue here and wherever you are watching us. Uh, it continues to happen. We are continuing the promise. Somebody ought to say I'm continuing the promise. Can you imagine making a promise? That continues 2,000 years, that's exactly what happened. Write this down. The Lord started pouring out his spirit over 2,000 years ago and is still pouring the same spirit on all flesh today. It, it, he, he started pouring out his spirit. And usually if you're pouring something, eventually you're going to run out of what you're pouring. It, it, uh, how big is the picture that would hold the Holy Spirit? And he started pouring out his spirit on all flesh. 2,000 years ago, it kept on pouring. 1,900 years, it kept on pouring. 1,800 years, kept on pouring. I want you to know that the same spirit that the Lord poured in the upper room is the same spirit that he's pouring today. Somebody ought to shout, thank you, Jesus. The Lord didn't have to say, oh, I ran out of Holy Ghost. Let me run back and get some more. All right, let me start again. No, somebody shout, it's the same Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Joel chapter 2, verse 28, he said, And it shall come to pass that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Peter said, For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. As a matter of fact, just yesterday in a new members class, we had a new members class and there was a family there and one of the men, uh, the, the, the husband was there with his wife and, and two children and, and we began to talk about the Holy Ghost and he remembered being baptized here, I think he said in 1998. And he remembered praying with Evangelist Logan and receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. And while we were in the new members class, he lifted up his hands before his wife and his two children and began to rejoice and speak in other tongues as the Spirit of God gave him the utterance. Hallelujah. So it continues to this day. In Acts chapter number 2, we're reading about the fulfillment of the moment they were waiting for. For 10 days, 120 of Jesus' closest followers gathered together in anticipation of the promise of the power of the Holy Ghost. Notice again. In Acts chapter 2, verse 2, he says, And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. Write this down. The word suddenly in Greek also means unexpectedly. In other words, the Holy Ghost burst upon them at once. Uh, though they were waiting for the descent of the Holy Ghost, they had no idea what 
to expect. There was a sound. Somebody say there was a sound. There was a sound that appeared to rush from the sky with suddenness. Uh, there was a sound of wind, but there was no wind. Uh, and that sound was so great that it filled the room where they were sitting. Every person in the house had the same experience of speaking in tongues. And they spake different tongues. I believe that, that of the 120 people in the room, uh, Evangelist Cecily, I believe there were 120 different tongues being spoken in that room. 120 people started speaking in tongues simultaneously. 120 people began to speak in tongues instantaneously. 120 people began to speak in tongues concurrently. 120 people began to speak in tongues miraculously. And I don't know about you, but I long to see a movement like that. I long to see an outpouring like that. I need you to understand that in this upper room, this was not what we would call popcorn, where one person started speaking and then the spirit went over to somebody else and then he went over to somebody else. No, no, no. This was 120 people at the same time having a movement at the same time. I want you to know something about the Holy Ghost, that being filled with the Holy Ghost always exceeds your expectation. I don't care how you imagine it's going to be. I don't care how you uh, try to predict how the Holy Ghost is going to feel. The Holy Ghost is indescribably good. <laughs> Glory be to God. The Holy Ghost, you can brace yourself all day long, but the Holy Ghost is going to be surprisingly refreshing. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is going to be astoundingly uplifting. The Holy Ghost is going to be unpredictably energizing. That's the reason we say there's something about the Holy Ghost. There's something about being filled with the Holy Ghost. It's greater than any high. It's greater than any accomplishment. It's more than any thrill. Do I have any witnesses that will honk your horn and celebrate being filled with the Holy Ghost? Hallelujah. We've got to talk more about what it means to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Being filled with the Holy Ghost is more than being a member of a church. It's more than a feeling, an F-E-E-L-I-N-G. I'm talking about an F-I-L-L-I-N-G. That will blow your mind. That will blow your expectations. I don't know about you, but I still remember the moment when I was filled with the Holy Ghost. The joy, hallelujah, was so great. No wonder Jesus said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. No wonder the songwriter says, it's joy unspeakable and full of glory. My brothers and sisters, if for some reason you haven't been filled with the Holy Ghost, you don't know what you're missing, but you sure can find out because the Holy Ghost is still being poured even in 2021. And if you want to receive the Holy Ghost, all you have to do is want him. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Write this down. The ability to speak in tongues was and is 
an evidence of being filled with the Holy Ghost. Ah, the ability to speak in tongues was and is an evidence of being filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, Acts chapter 2 verse 4 says, and they were all filled. <laughs> Somebody ought to say all. Uh, they were all filled. Uh, all who? All 120 of them were filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, for them, uh, this was the moment they were waiting for. And for us, it can be the same thing. Uh, for them, it was an undeniable proof. For them it was an irrefutable evidence. For them it was an indisputable testimony. For them speaking in tongues was incontestable. It was, it was a verification of what they had experienced and it was definite in its witness. They looked at each other and said, I did it. Uh, they looked at each other and said, I spoke in tongues. Uh, they looked at each other and said, I heard myself speak a language that I did not learn. Well, how did you do that? Uh, well, I can tell you how I did it. It was the spirit of God that gave me the ability to speak in tongues. I didn't repeat what I heard somebody say. I didn't say what somebody else was saying. But when I began to speak and when I speak today, it is by an, an urging of the Holy Ghost. They began to say to themselves, I was filled with the Holy Ghost. And many can say today, I am filled with the Holy Ghost. And so we have this evidence. We have this proof. We have this, 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 this clear experience called speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues. Can I just preach a little while longer? Out here on the parking lot. Speaking in tongues was how God introduced the promise to the world. Speaking in tongues is how God started a new prayer language for his followers. Before Pentecost, uh, uh, the prayer was limited to whatever words you could speak. Uh, but after Pentecost, uh, God downloaded a whole new vocabulary uh, deep in our spirits. Uh, speaking in tongues was uh, how God initiated his church. Uh, it was how God established uh, an amazing intimacy uh, of indwelling. Uh, Speaking in tongues is how God began a more personal presence in his followers. That's the reason why we don't pretend and play with tongues. We know this ain't nothing to play with. This thing is real. That's a real power I feel. That's a real anointing I feel. Somebody ought to honk amen. So then for us today, speaking in tongues still exists. I know there's some people who said, who say that don't happen anymore. Well, they haven't been around us. Because if you come around here, you're going to find out. Yeah, God's still pouring his spirit. For us, speaking in tongues is how God continues to fulfill the promise of of his Holy Spirit. For us, speaking in tongues is how God unleashes a new prayer language to his followers. You want to take your prayer to another level, pray in tongues. Speaking in tongues is how God pours 
into his church. He pours new life into us through this gift. Hallelujah, the gift of the Holy Ghost. God enables us to have an amazing intimacy of indwelling of his Holy Spirit. And he blesses us with a more personal presence within. And we don't have to guess if we have the Holy Ghost. We don't have to him haw as to whether or not we have the Holy Ghost. We don't even have to argue with somebody as to whether or not we have the Holy Ghost. If you want to know, how do I know that I have the Holy Ghost? I may not speak in your presence, but the evidence is within me. I know, I know, I know, I know. I know I have the Holy Ghost because the same Spirit that spake in the 120 is still speaking in me. Somebody ought to shout.